welcome back to episode five of the Ref Bump. My name is Cod Sinclair. I am Jeff Hitman Hall, the wrestling purist. Beautiful. I love it. Um, today we are going to be talking about some 2000s WCW. Um, we're looking at Super Brawl. Um, Super Brawl is, um, for us for us wrestling purists, um, especially the older Super Brawls, definitely had um, a little bit of intrigue to, to them. They're kind of a WCW staple, if you will. Um, but as most of us already know, 2000s WCW was an absolute crapshoot. <laughs> um, what do you being nice? What do you remember the most about WCW in the year 2000, Jeff? Um, a lot of things you had never seen. There was probably no no middle ground here. So you're talking about things you had never seen before, or things that you've seen a million times. It was kind of this weird, what can we do to top this and top that? So it was just the hokiest and the, the most outlandish. And then it also was, again, like I said, things you've seen a million times in a row. Yeah, this was definitely an interesting card, to say the least. Um, very, very interesting, though. Um, around this time um, was when he was when Vince Russo left the company. Um, And this is when Kevin Sullivan picked up the ball and started writing. And he was the head writer for WCW at the time. Um, So he was kind of put into a difficult position. Um, Obviously he's been a booker before, but you know, when you're given a plate of crap, there's only so much you can do with it. Um, so I, I mean, I, there's just so much to go over. Um, so Jeff, if you're ready to do this, I'm ready to do this, man. Um, as much as I don't want to rush the show, but can we put ourselves out of our own miseries, please? (laughs) Um, (laughs) so opening contest is for the vacant WCW World Cruiserweight Championship as you have the artist formerly known as Prince Ikea um, doing his best Prince impersonation um, being accompanied to the ring by Paisley also known as Queen Charmel and taking on the raging Cajun Lash LaRue um, so how we got to this match um, it, so uh, we had the cruiserweight champion Medusa at the time. Um, she uh, wrestled her match against Oklahoma. <laughs> um, we could dive that's in one, a whole rabbit hole with that if we wanted to. Well, that's actually one I I didn't forget, but again, like I used to say on this this show, but I actually did forget a little bit. I I, I saw him on the program and I was like, Oh man, I completely forgot about this whole running gag. Yeah. So if you if you watch our show for the first time, you're just catching this. Um, Oklahoma is Ed Ferrara. Um, he is cosplaying as Jim Ross um, over dramatizing the uh, bells, bells palsy a- aspect of it um, in extremely poor taste. Um, but he, um, but he gave up the cruiserweight championship. So, um, we had an eight man field to get to where we're at. Um, we had, we had Prince Ikea defeat Psychosis and Kaz Hayashi to get here. Um, and then we had Lash LaRue defeat Evan Courageous and Shannon Moore to get here. So, um, a whole lot of mediocrity outside of psychosis um yep but um it was an okay match i mean the big thing and we'll mention it a couple of times as we go through this show is the crowd doesn't care at all usually the first match is it's usually a rite of passage or it's just like where they say the curtain jerker uh this one 
in today's standards, I was watching, I think like, well, is this like a pre-show match or is this a dark match or it just, they were not into it at all. Like you said. No. Um, and you know what, darn, darn them for trying. Um, the artist um, hits a diving DDT to win. Um, I gave it a one count because I thought the, I mean, it, it was a little sloppy, but it didn't deserve anything below um, maybe even like a one star rating, um, depending on what scale you're using. Um, but I mean, it's just the finals of a tournament that had really no, it, no intrigue or any excitement to it. Um, and then on top of that, the crowd, like, like I said, the crowd didn't care. There was no heat one way or the other. Um, but yeah. yeah um, uh, but matches and storylines and, and everything like that struggles when you don't have a, why do I need to watch this? Yeah. And it didn't have anything, it had any reason why you needed to watch it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, a great example is in current, in current a AEW, um, they do their high spot flippy tag team matches to lead off their uh, dynamite shows a lot of times, um, which is which is great. That's what you want to do. Like you said, the first match you've got to come out, you've got to hook, hook hook the crowd, and this didn't do it. Nope. Um, but don't worry, it gets totally better. Um, for the WCW Hardcore Championship, we get the defending champion, Bam Bam Bigelow, um, against the challenger, Brian Nobbs. Um, so if I could step in right here, right, right here. So looking, not so much on the match, but just in general. One, like I always say um, on our show here, when you look back and COD, you watch probably more wrestling than anybody in a weekly. Listen, I'm going to go on a side a tangent here. I challenge anybody to show me your like wrestling log or tally up the hours because I'm saying no one is watching more hours of wrestling than COD on a weekly basis. Um, but with that being said, like I said, going back and watching old wrestling, you forget how everybody enjoys it. Was this dreck of a pay-per-view absolutely but the fans are there again moms kids grandparents and they're just absolutely loving it they're just eating it up whether it's good bad or indifferent and that's just you know an old school wrestling you know that's gone and again it probably won't ever come back um and then two again going back to look at these older pay-per-views this 2000s the, the year 2000 was really weird in the sense of a lot of the guys I've been wrestling for a long time, going back and looking at it now, they just like Bam Bam didn't look great. And he's a great worker. You just, so that was for me watching continuing, you know, all night with the pay-per-view you're watching. And it's just like, man, like, you know, when you're watching, when you're younger, you don't necessarily see it, but going back to look at it, you're like, it's, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say a changing of the guard, but I would just say that it was just a lot of older guys, it just people just look like they had a lot of mileage on them. Cod, what do you what do you think? Yeah, no, I I, I completely agree. Um, the thing um, with that is, um, th we we were definitely still in a backstage politic um, era of professional wrestling where it wasn't what you did; it was it was it was who you knew. Um, yeah, Brian Brian Nobbs, great great friends with Hogan. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it, it's situations like that where these older guys that hang around for a while because of that. Um, Bam Bam's another one. Um, there's, you um, watch, you know, the, um, you know, you know, like you know, the backstage shoot interviews, mm -hmm. um, you know, nobody has a bad thing to say about Bam Bam. He was a little stiff at times. Um, but not a bad thing to say about the guy, which is probably why he had a job in, two, in 2000. Um, he had a feud. I think it was this year where he had a feud with Goldberg um, because it was coming off of the World War III um, 
the World War III where he got involved. Um, so they're putting him, they were putting him in high profile spots too. Um, but there's no reason why Brian Nobbs should be in a single yeah. match. Um, for a title. Yeah, for a title. And spoiler alert, he wins. Um, <laughs> he hits Bam Bam Bigelow um, in the back. Uh, again, with, again with what's the worse? That or that he's going, or that he went over, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is... <sighs> This is around the time that they released uh, Backstage Assault, um, the game for uh, PlayStation, and that game freaking pissed me off. Oh, oh. My gosh, being being such okay. So my my first PlayStation One game was WCW versus the World. Okay, um, there we go. Outstanding, just PlayStation game. At, Everything was great. And then you get this garbage fire and it pissed me off. And watching this match, it reminded me a lot of that. Just, it was a hardcore match for the sake of having one. Um, you know, and the funny thing is right before this match though, um, we, see, um, we see Norman Smiley getting his ribs taped. And towards the end, you're thinking like, okay, when is the big wiggle going to come? You know, be, because he was like, and this is kind of silly to say, but he was kind of Crash Holly with the hardcore title before Crash yeah. Holly was with the hardcore title. Um, I mean, Smiley was over. Yeah. 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 Big wiggle was over. It was all over. I was choking. No, I'm <laughs> no, I mean, he wasn't going to win your heavyweight championship, yeah. but he was over for what it's worth. No, and that's the same thing with Crash Holly, though, is is he was is he was over probably the most entertaining thing on week to week tel television. Um, but we didn't get that here. Um, it wasn't fun. That's that's the other thing, too. This match was boring. Mm -hmm. Like. You're 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 thinking of a hardcore match, and you're thinking, oh, yeah, I like chairs and trash kids. We're gonna throw things at each other, walk around the building. Like, no, it's boring. Yeah, it looked like they took the night off. <laughs> well, they're there to get a paycheck, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, so moving on to the next match, it is a handicap match. Speaking of big wiggle, um. It is Big Wiggle himself, Norman Smiley, taking on three count, which would be Evan Courageous, Shannon Moore, and Shane Helms. Um, there's 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 not a whole lot to, not a whole lot to say about this. Um, um, Smiley gets his get, gets his shtick in, and then, yeah. Okay, um, what did you think about the Cesaro swing? <laughs> um. Uh, I think it needed to be trademarked. <laughs> yeah, it should, have, it should have been the smiley swing. Uh huh. Jeez. Um. Oh, big wiggle. But yeah. Um. Goes for the chicken wing. Gets bro. Gets gets broken up. The numbers game. Um. Three three count win. Um. I'm giving it. I'm giving it a one. I'm being really nice because of what I just watched before this. Yep. Um. Just, just the fact that, like, like, like we were just saying, Norm, Norman Smiley at this point on on the show is the most over person, and we're three matches in, you know. And that, now, th now there wasn't anything really spectacular about this match, other than the other than the swing. But I mean, yeah, that's it. No, no, I mean, again. Norman Smiley was great. Three count was three count. Um, you know, you got old Helms. Uh, the way I I like the way they book him a year from now, as opposed to this, they give him the singles run he deserved. Um, but you can watch it. I, I I watched it and you could see he he was the guy at all that you know. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. the guy. So. Yeah. Um. 
I'm hoping that we get to um, some of his cruiserweight stuff from 2001 because um, uh, his finisher at the time was called Nightmare on Helm Street, and I yeah. popped every time. Yeah, <laughs> every yeah. time. That's um, a good one. Yeah. So this next match is really interesting. Um, it is the special main event between um, the Kiss Demon, also known as Dale Torborg, uh, taking on the wall. Um, so the Kiss Demon was something really, really special. Um, so at the end of a at the end of a Nitro, um, we get this Kiss concert. It was one of the lowest rated segments um, in Monday Nitro history. Um, but Eric Bischoff had had a hard on for him, so brought him on. Um, he wanted to build a character um, based off of Kiss, so um, we get the Kiss Demon. Um, so in the contract that they signed to have the rights for the Kiss likeness, um, and even for a while there to use um, one of their songs as, yeah. um, you know, the as as the intro uh music for him um is that the giz demon would be in in a main event match um so obviously handful of matches get into his in-ring career and he's god awful Um, yes so this is their way around that um is a special main event um, to kind of loophole themselves out of this so that they don't have to put uh, the Kiss Demon in the actual main event match anywhere. Yeah. Uh, a special main event that's in the middle of the card. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> it's the, it's the fourth match, and it's a special main, main event. Um, uh, uh, another thing, too, is, God, if you look at his intro, how much money, and this is WWE in 2000, so, I mean, what, their head's above water, barely, you know? Yeah. Um, How much money you think that like kiss demon uh, little like box coffin, you know, he came out of like, how much you think that cost him? You Uh, know, just a couple thousand. Yeah. Yeah. That thing was probably five grand and they used it twice, you know, and they're barely keeping their head above water. Mm -hmm. I saw him come out. I was like, Oh my God. And they're in ring. Yeah. He almost, uh, the wall was on the top rope, and he, I, I'm not, obviously you saw, he threw him off and he almost broke his neck. He almost oh, like yeah. threw him right on his neck. I, I, I was waiting for the wall to like, like, as soon as I saw it happen, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to, let me put my eagle eye on because I'm sure he's going to be sending him, him a potato here or a receipt here, very, you know, real shortly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a bad wrestler against another not great wrestler. Um, there this was the sake this this was here to get out of a contract honestly because the wall is like a rejected right to censor member um if 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 he's calling a match and leading a match you're in trouble yeah yeah so um i gave it i gave it nothing this was a waste of time for me um speaking of wasting people's times um, leather jacket on a pole match. Um, who wrote this show again? Because God, it feels like it's friggin' Vince. Yep. Um, so we have Big Al versus Tank Abbott. What do you know, Jeff, about Big Al? Uh, not that much. So, uh, Tank Abbott, obviously, I know about. Um, Big Al, I do not. Um, Big Al was one of Tank Abbott's bodyguards. Um, okay. It makes you think why um, a man of Tank Abbott's physical stature and you know combat combat background, where he would need one of those, especially in WCW. Um, so, from what I could gather, um, he stole Tank Abbott's leather jacket. Um, which would lead to this, but why are their hands tied together with a belt? I didn't understand that either. Um, 
Okay. So uh, it, the it, best part of the match. Okay. Oh, oh no, no, it's not. Oh, okay. It, uh, we'll just skip to the end. Um, Tank Abbott gets the leather jacket on the pole. It's a zero count for me. Um, but after the match, Tank Abbott pulls a pocket. Well, hold on. Oh, well, go, well, go ahead. Sorry. So if we can set the stage here. So Tank Abbott gets on the top, like gets on the middle rope with him over, you know, like a sack of potatoes over his shoulder. And then he just dumps him to the out. I mean, he just dumped him to the outside. Mm. And I was like, oh. Okay. I mean, he just dumped them. And then, right, Cod, continue, please. Yeah. Um, pulls a pocket knife out of his pocket, puts it to Big Al's throat, and says, and, and I don't remember them bleeping it out um, on the network version. Um, they might have, but it was a while. But um, Tank Abbott then says, I, I could effing kill you right now. With a knife. Nice, now, this is as close to a last boy Boy Scout moment that professional wrestling could ever get to. It looked like real heat to me. Yeah. Like I, again, I mean, I know it's wrestling, so it could all have been a, it could all have been a work, and that's fair. But, but he pulled that knife out that pocket and put it to his neck, and then he like turned it, and I was like, oh boy! And then the camera, the camera panned off of it and like went to the crowd. So I was like, oh. And again, I I watched a lot of w, WCW, and that didn't look like. Believe me, if if, if it was something they did, they, 2000 WCW would have never took the camera off somebody. And this sounds crazy, but if they planned it, they would have never took the camera off with a knife to somebody's throat. Yeah. If if w, WCW was working was was I'm sorry was working with it, okay. that's why I don't. That's why I don't think this was a work. I think this was a shoot, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. It was really awkward. Um, and then you have Tony Schiavone trying to play it off as like he was going to cut off like his beard or whatever. Like, come on. Like, stop it. Like, yep. uh, um, What's his face is terrible on commentary, too. Um, no, like Mark, Mark, uh, Mark Madden. Yes, absolutely awful. Well, he's, a, he's, a, he's a schmuck. Ugh. He is. He's awful. Um, Speaking of big fat schmucks, we get Big T being accompanied by Jay Biggs and Stevie Ray taking on Booker. No, my audio didn't cut out. Uh, no, I didn't forget about Booker. Um, he lost the T portion of his name. Um, and now this match is for the rights to the Harlem Heat name. Um, what was one thing you noticed about Big T? Um, uh, he was big and not in the, the, the good type, the good, the, the good kind. He was out of his prime. You, you could tell he had been home, um, eating everything nailed down and not exercising and not, you know, d d doing what he was supposed to, supposed to do to be a professional wrestler. Cause man, he looked again, he, Ahmed could get away with that in WWE because he looked like a million dollars. Yeah but he did not look like a million dollars here. So from what I could gather, um, be, um, Ahmed Johnson's, the end of his run in WWF, um, he kind of just got up and left. Um, it was that um, his sister was doing really bad uh, dealing with cancer. Um, and according to other backstage reports, he was a guy that did not want to burden other people with like his personal problems, especially at the workplace. So um, he just kind of got up and left. It was like 15 minutes before match. Um, and um, he left. He didn't say anything at all to it. Anyone got up and left. That was it. Now, if if I could step in, the, the funny thing is, is there was a bunch of rumblings that Vince really, 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 really liked him. Like really, really liked him as in like, you know, he was probably going to be your African-American champ. You know, I, I get possibly, I guess it was it was it, it might have been coming down the line because in, in that time period, again, Vince is a body guy and he again was huge. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and he liked them. And then if I could tell a Cornette story real quick too, Cornette said that he either had him booked for Smokey or, or somebody else had him booked. He said, and you know, he said he comes into town, you know, he gets into town, he, he stays at the hotel and they send the car, whoever the promoter is, they send the car over to get him. He's like, well, um, you know, it's, I might, I might come, I might riding over there if it's not a limousine. And the guy's like, like we paid for your flight to get you, you know, no, I mean, he, now he's out of WWE at this point. Um, he said, well, we, we paid for your flight and we're paying for all this stuff, you know, we're coming to pick you up. Like we're not, I'm not, you know, we're not bringing you a limo. So he didn't show. And then the promoter at the thing said, Hey, well, you know, I man Johnson didn't show tonight because we wouldn't send a limo to, 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 to go pick him up. And here's his phone number. Call him and tell him how you feel about it. <laughs> a true story. God. Oh. Yeah. It just goes to show you that, you know, he was a polarizing figure backstage. And as a kid, you know, as, as you know, this was 2000. So I was like 10. There were, there was no way that I would even think about that. Um, but long, long, long story short, he's severely overweight um, just absolutely bloated. Hey, bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, big, big T um, didn't look great. Didn't execute his offense. Great. Um, Booker carried this match. Um, how about the generic, a uh, jobber theme that they gave Booker. Yeah. Um, I will say this, and again, this isn't a shocker. Booker's such a good worker. He's a really good worker. I mean, he, he has everything. He can work. He, again, is he a flip guy and doing all this? No, but he's really athletic. Um, he can sell. He's a total package. Um, and I, I'm not saying – I mean, yeah, he won five times, and he won the w, w, WCW championship. But, man, I feel like – in another in another life or another world he could have he could have been a really 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 good champ yeah um and i think that's why um because i was watching one of those um i was watching one of those um you know tna clips the, the other day about like you know the top five best debuts or whatever and just realizing like booker t in 2007 um getting the huge pop that he did then and he was still working well i mean i mean towards his towards the end of his tenure with uh with a wwe he was still working with guys like mysterio um undertaker um eddie guerrero um you know chris ben benoit he was he was working with high profile guys still and again i i i'll die on this hill and I guess this is my cross to to, uh, to to carry because that whole thing between him and Triple H was great. Like, it was absolutely great. Was there a little bit of racism in it? Yeah. Um, but to be fair, it's wrestling. And at that time, I mean, you're playing you, – they're, st- they're still trying to shoot and, and work and, you know, pull the wool over everybody's eyes. But when he lost at WrestleMania, when he lost to Triple H, man, that was that was it. And they had their, I mean, not that that was it, but like they just had lightning in a bottle right there and they didn't go with it. Um, but I mean, we, we can say that for another day, but shocker, Triple H, um, you know, going over somebody. Yeah. Um, the only thing I didn't like was the finish to the match of the Adam Mania. Um, Agree. Take you 30 seconds from hitting the pedigree to crawling over to pin and still get a three. Um, but no, you're right. For another day, um, we'll get back into this match. Um, Booker T hits a scissor kick, um, goes to the top, hits a missile drop kick. Referee starts to count, and the lights go out. Okay? So, you know, lights come back on, and who is it? Uh, We don't know, actually. Yeah, yeah, we legitimately don't know. Um, to put it as blunt as humanly possible, it's a random black dude just standing on the apron. Um, um, big generic black guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're making your WWE 2K guy, 
um, you just scroll the color black, and then to, uh, the guy that pops up. Another thing too, this guy was so big, and and it's the two thousands. Just so much leather, just so much leather. I mean, the, leather. he had about a whole damn cow on his back. <laughs> Um, you know, by the yeah. time it was all said and done with that jacket. Yeah. Um, but to finish this off, um, Big T hits a really bad looking Pearl River plunge, um, gets the win. Um, oh, I, I gave this nothing also. I gave it a zero count. There is no reason why Ahmed Johnson should have a job. Um, and, it, and it's not because of um, – the, the potential un, unprofessionalism, I guess, of either A, picking your ball up and going home, um, you know, the other side of that coin, getting signed and coming in so overweight you can't work. Um, he just uh, – um, I gave it a star, and I just gave it a star because of Booker. That's it. <laughs> so, if he wasn't in this match, this would have this got nothing. But I, I, I agree. At least when I saw – when I was watching the match, I was like, oh, man, here comes a Pearl River plunge. Like, that'll, that'll get you in the feels. Uh, nope. Yeah. That was terrible, too. And I was like, oh, man. That's when I was like, man, this is this just going down here with no breaks. It was so depressing. But, yeah. Uh, uh, moving on, um, we get um, – sorry, get back to my notes here. Um, we have uh, Billy Kidman. Um, being accompanied by Tori Wilson, taking on uh, one of the greatest color commentators of all time, Vampiro. Um, check out his AAA stuff. Boy, is it great. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on this one? So in the pay-per-view, they showed the run-up and, the, and the, all the matches up to this. I think this is your match of the night. Um, I think this is really, really good. I think Vampiro um, gets overlooked for a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of reasons, sometimes self-inflicted, <laughs> but a lot of people um, and younger people just know him as like, you know, the guy that's on, um, uh, Lord, what, what was the rest? Uh, what was the uh, Lucha Underground? Like, you know, they oh, just yeah. look at him as the commentator for that or just commentator in general, triple A. Um, but no, in his day, he was a really good wrestler and he was really good. And this match with Kidman was really good. And I dug it, Kai. I don't know. when. What about you? Um, I It, it, it might have been at this point if I was just um, kind of jaded by the fact that everything else on this card was garbage. Um, but I, I enjoyed this. Um, I gave it, I gave it a one and a half count. Um, it, it was a, it was a solid match. Um, there is the spot where Tori Wilson just gets up and just stands on the apron yeah. really awkwardly and just standing and standing and just waiting and waiting. And so, so she gets off the apron and then she gets back up on the apron to do what she was supposed to do. Yeah, I you're again. I guess let me backtrack. I'm not saying this is the bee's knees here, but <laughs> compared to the the again the direct that was has been on this pay per view uh, at this whole time, was was there a, a couple things wrong on this one? Yes, but this was an actual proper wrestling match. There was wrestling going on in the ring at a pretty good level. Yeah, um, this this had its fair share of botches. Um, Getting to the finish, um, Kidman just kind of pulls Vampiro or pushes him um, down to the mat. Like, that's it. Yeah. I, maybe it was a time issue where they just didn't have enough time. Um, but to this point, at seven minutes and 20 seconds, this is the longest match of the card and we're seven matches in now. I mean, th this is the, this is literally the only match that had any wrestling in it. Pretty, pretty much. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, the rest of the card. Good God. Yeah. Uh, that, I, but like, when you look at it on your notes, God, like you're going through your brain and you're like, yeah, I'm right. Right. Like this yeah. is the only, like, I mean, as in like, you know, just selling and bump take like real bump taking and yeah. 
I would say between this and the Cruiserweight Championship match, that's it. Well, yes. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, how about the uh, Mark Madden quote of the night um, saying that next year these two will meet for the United States title, and two years from now they'll be meeting for the world title? Um, also, um, he had uh, a house in Harlem too, in the that he that he that he that he sold or something like that. He said the match before. <laughs> Oh God, he sucks. Um, but but no, yeah, it, good stuff there. Um, leads us right into the Sicilian stretcher match. Um, you get Crowbar and David Flair being accompanied by Daphne, um, taking on Big Vito and Johnny the Bull being accompanied by Disco Inferno. They are your world tag team champions at this point. Try to get through that without laughing. Um, uh, Mama Luke's. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not sure what to think so, about. Them. All right. So I can't properly um, assess this match because I love the Mama Luke's. So God, you're gonna have to take you, 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 you're gonna have to take you're gonna take this one out of my hands, brother. I thought I thought you were gonna say crowbar. I really uh, no, no, no. I I, oh. I love me. I, I, I love me some Daphne and I love me some some of the Mama Luke's. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean it was what it was. Um Dave, I would say it was fun. It yeah. was a fun match. Yeah. Um it was definitely chaotic, it was messy, but I mean so you look at who's in the match, especially on the one side, you've got Crowbar, um, who's a career lower level guy. You have David Flair, who has no in-ring prowess at all. Nope. Um, Big Vito, Johnny the Bull, they're very serviceable. Um, I, I'd, I'd argue Daphne might be the most talented out of all of them, out of either, David Flair and, and Crowbar. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, you've got Disco Inferno, so. I, I mean, like on 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 her tag team, oh, you know, yeah. in, in that stable of of you know oddities, if you will. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I guess. Um. Yeah, I guess the Mamelukes win. Um. They tape David Flair to the to the stretcher. Uh, cart him to the back. Um, Gee, you're, you're forgetting, Kyle. They have they have to get willed out of the building. To win. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the building. That's right. The, the, the actual structural building. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, Crowbar gets put through a table. Um, then they take Crowbar away. Um, then they tape and gag Daphne to a wheelchair. And that is it. And they wheel her off. Yeah. Um, hopefully. Well, like the, they wheel her out with, you know, as, as they're going out. Yeah. Hopefully out of, you know, the structure of the building. Yeah. Um, I gave it a half count. Like I said, it, it, it's not nearly as incompetent as the other garbage fire matches that are on this card. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Nothing special, but yeah, one star. It was a. It was fun. Yeah. Um. So then. Um. So Ernest Miller, Ernest the Cat Miller, for weeks has been saying that he's going to have James Brown appear on this show. He's going to make sure James Brown is on this show. So I'm going to stop you right there because, okay, this is a ball that WCW dropped. If you know you're getting James Brown on your show, why wouldn't you advertise that? It's, it's beyond me. I, I, I agree with you. Um, but, yeah, he comes out. What's uh, the – God, what's the over – what's the over under James Brown gets the, gets the biggest pop all night? <laughs> um, say That's what it sounded like to me. Yeah. Uh, to this point, yeah. Um, this is not um, – this, this, it's sad. Um, but it's great. Um, oh, it, it is. We get a fake James Brown who comes to the ring. Um, so then we, um, so then the maestro. Okay, so. Good. I don't, 
Todd, I've been watching wrestling for a long time and I have a pretty good knowledge of it. I don't remember. I watched that. I watched the program and I was like, who in the hell is this guy? I don't ever, because once everything started going, I was like, okay, yeah. Like I, I remember this. I remember James Brown coming out. I, re- I remember the segment. Like, you know, I have, I don't remember this guy, the maestro at all ever in life and wrestling career. I mean, I, I, I just couldn't like, if you just sent me a picture of him and say, Hey Jeff, who's that? I, I would have had nothing for you. Nothing for you. Yeah. I, I honestly thought um, when I was reading my notes back before this, before we started this, I'm like, Oh, it's the guy that, um, that the cat was with when he was in WWF and they were in the rumble. And, um, well, and I think it was Chris Benoit goes to throw the maestro out of the ring and he throws that's him instead. Not him. Oh, but that's what I thought it was at first. Um, but um, kind of just a silly seg, kind of a silly segment. Um, you know, before we get to the Texas death match, um, we have Ric Flair taking on Terry Funk. Um, being accompanied by Dustin Rhodes. Um, you are the blue jean and cowboy boot um, aficionado of podcast world order. Um, uh, thank you come first. Uh, I am. If anybody knows me, I'm a sucker for a Texas death match. Um, Terry Funk is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Um, Terry Funk, Dory, Dory Funk Jr., anything out of Amarillo, Texas, really. Um, I love those guys. I love the, everything they stand for. Um, all their stuff against Devon Eric's, it's just great. Uh, this they they again, like I said earlier, they try. You know, it's either stuff you've seen a thousand times or stuff you've never seen in this two thousands era wrestling. So they tried to do their like eighty nine, I quit, you know, deal match, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and it it wasn't that. But I mean, for me, again, I probably I probably can't properly uh, look at this because I love Terry Funk. Um, for those two guys, it wasn't terrible. It, for me, it, it's, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, but that did look like a stiff pile driver though, that he took in that Flair took inside that ring. Oh boy. It took, it looks stiff. Yeah. Um, Jeff, what are the rules of a Texas death match? Um, well, it's simple. There are no rules. It's a uh, Texas death match. You would be incorrect, sir. Uh, Ooh. so, well, According well, to the- CW, you are. Um, so it seems like, um, and this is where the for me, the crowd kind of lost it. Um, um, so it seems like you had to cover your opponent, get the three, and then from there you had a ten count to get to your feet, and then if you couldn't answer the ten count, then you lost. So I, I was so confused because it was like um, a death match mixed with a regular match, but then mixed with a last man standing match. No. Yeah. The only thing it was missing was like a bull rope, to be honest with you, <laughs> uh, or, or, or no, or, or, or like a strap match. Um, no, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're right. You're right. Usually a Texas death match is just a Texas death match. There's no, um well i i guess it's either it's either pinfall or it's or it's a it's not a pinfall and then a standing 10 i I don't that's not how it works it was very weird um but i mean like you said it was exactly what we kind of expected um uh you know rick rick flair wins um, longest match of the night and okay. under 16 minutes. Um, I gave it a one and a half count. I think this match suffers from, again, the crowd not being into it. I really think it could have added just a little bit to just, just the atmosphere that they were building. Um, I thought that this is one of the better told stories um, as far as within a single match that WCW did during this time period. Um, 
there were there there were a couple of callbacks um, to you know some late '80s, early '90s stuff um, that they did. So I I enjoyed it. I really did. I gave it a one and a half count. Uh, yeah, um, I enjoyed it. I gave it a three star. Um, it probably wasn't that good, but again, that's my decision. If you don't like it, you can get tossed out. Um, so yeah, like you said, great callbacks, and you're out of there. <laughs> There we go. Um, yeah, callbacks, you know, telling Flair's going to break his neck, you know, ask him, does he quit? You know, uh, just just great stuff. Again, like I understand how some of the younger crowd didn't like it or hell, maybe even some of the people that were in the in the arena probably were like, what's going on here? Um, for old men like myself, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, moving on uh, to the semi main event, we have. Uh, Lex Luger being accompanied by Miss Elizabeth taking on Hulk Hogan. Um, uh, half account for me. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm tired of reviewing <laughs> Luger matches and seeing the same dang thing. He plods around the ring. He's not mobile. He's not fast. He's not exciting. He has no charisma. He's a charisma vacuum. Uh, I have nothing more to say. Um, Hulk Hogan's great. Um, God, uh, God, right, right, right to the meat potatoes there. Yeah. Overall, just, um, not a fan of this, um, and really not a fan of the finish at all. Um, Um, I'm a Hulk Hogan mark. Um, but if you've got Hogan wrestling Luger, you are in trouble. <laughs> those yeah, two guys should never. Survive. Yeah, yeah. Those guys should never. And I, I can't even say like, oh, well, if they were in the ring 10 years before that prior, no. They should never be in the ring together. Um, maybe on opposite tag teams. But if it's not involved with anybody else, no. Yeah. Lex is just, he's just eye candy. You know, he can't move. He can't work. He can't throw a punch. He's just. Again, Hogan's not a worker either, but I mean, he can take bumps and sell and do his thing. Hogan's going to be Hogan, um, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. And you can get by with some of that. Hell, he had a match with Shawn Michaels. Well, I'm, 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 I'm actually think I'm dreading that here in the, in the near future. But Lex is just, he's just awful. He's just, he's just awful. And it's just the only way I can put it. Yeah. I'm not wasting any more time on this, and I'm not going to make you waste your time on it. That's um, fair. So we get a run in from Ric Flair after after the match. Um, him and Luger putting the boots to Hogan, and that is until Sting comes, makes the save, cleans house, quick in, quick out. Um, another pretty de- decent pop, though. Um, what a um, what a turnaround from Starcade to there yeah. you know if you're looking at it in totality between hogan and staying you do you come all the way around to you know what we to that it's just insane so moving on to the main event um we have a th- so they advertise this as a three-way dance they can kiss my ass this is not a three-way dance um this is a triple threat match um, a three-way dance um, is when is when once somebody gets pinned or they tap, they are eliminated, and then you have your final one-on-one match. Um, whereas a triple threat, it's whoever scores the first fall. Um, so I will defend a three-way dance, and that's the hill that I will die on because I much prefer that to any other. Multi, uh, you know, triple threat, um, fatal four, four way, anything of that nature. Um, look at Cod sound like a cornet guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, cornet for all intents and purposes, the originator of the three ray dance rule, you know, match slash rule. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, it's, I can see the point of both, but the one you know one eliminated and the other two go is 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 always 
top dog for me. Like we we reviewed ECW when Taz was on his way out. So he gets pinned first and your mind explodes because you're like, what? Like, you know, he's not going to be champion now, you know, like now. So now now we're going to have a new champion. I just think you can use it. And I just think it's just really, really versatile. Yeah. Um, but we have the champion, Sid Vicious, defending against Scott Hall and Jeff Jarrett um, with the Harris brothers, Harris twins, Skull, Eight, eight Ball, um, you know, whatever you want to call them. Um, um, over under Jeff um of three referees being used in this match (laughs) (laughs) oh it was it was ref bump city oh well ref bump slash um you know some nick patrick shenanigans style style shenanigans going on um seriously though uh do you do you remember how many referees they went through um two was it three no it was a four Oh, oh, no. It was five referees. Yeah. Slick. Because two bumps. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it was two bumps and it was the, the bad shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the uh, yeah. two and my rotator cuff is gone. Uh. Oh. Uh, yeah. So they go through five officials in this match, which is overbooking which is WCW overbooking at its finest. Um, Nothing, nothing special. Um, Well, I say five, um, but then uh, we get Roddy Piper (laughs) going down on a ref shirt. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, well, does, did Piper count as a ref? Like when you first said five, I was like, so is it, am I, did I miscount? Did I miss one? Is, is is Kyle counting Piper? (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So he's the fifth ref. Um, but stops Jarrett from winning. Sid gets the choke slam on Jarrett and a power bomb on Scott Hall and retains. He's also in an arm um, brace. Oh God! Oh God! And he's coming in to clean house, Jack. Uh, I gave I gave this nothing. <laughs> I don't I don't care about it. Um, I it, this this match was seven minutes. It's the main event of your show, and it's seven minutes, okay? Good thing it wasn't a special main event. Hey, yeah, if it was a special main event, it would have been over earlier. Um, but no, it was – It things moved quick, but nothing was happening. But, uh, I don't know. Well, what do you grade this one? Uh, I mean, I gave it nothing. Um, if I had to give it anything, I'll give it a one just because I love Jeff Jarrett. But outside of that, it was it was nothing. Um, uh, it, yeah, it, it, again, it, it's it's your typical WCW, especially to, especially two thousands. They were that was the height of this, where you get to the main event, and you know anything that can go wrong will. Yeah, you know, just with all like you said, f- five refs, ref bumps, ref just pure blatant inside jobs, you know, guitar shots. I mean, you, you got it all. It's just the most overbooked thing. And, and like, like you said, Kevin Sullivan screwed no matter what, but I'm never going to knock. The, well, I guess you can, but like, <laughs> I, I'm going to knock the guy less that has the, that has the idea. And I'm going to knock the 20 other people in the room. It's like, Oh uh, yeah, that's great. That's a great mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. That's all them too. I can't yeah. believe you got all the way to this point and decided that this was this were how was how we're going to end it. It's just this is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, um, I can I completely agree. Um, they they might have just said, "Hey, Russo's out the door. Um, you got to put a show show together. Um, just may just make it entertaining, and maybe this is just what we got, which is really bad." Um, yeah. I- but shame on them for putting this show on. Um, shame on them for giving us a seven-minute main, main event. Um, you gave 16 minutes to Flair and Funk, um, not knocking them at all, but 
you know, in invest in your product, I guess, yeah. you know, the message here, you get, it's the same structure match, fun. Um, the leather jacket on a pole match, stupid. Handicap match, stupid. Special main event, stupid. Hardcore match, stupid. Um, you know, Hulk, Hulk Hogan and, oh, sorry, sorry. I said Lex Luger. Sorry. It's Hulk Hogan and the total package. Um, stupid. Um, three-way dance. That wasn't a three-way dance. It was stupid. Like, yep. we're not investing in the future. We're investing to get to the next show. And that's the problem that I have with this entire card. You had two matches that are, you know, one definitely worth the watch. The other one, you kind of get caught in it because it's the first one on the show. Um, but don't watch this show. Don't watch it. Okay. Well, there, there, there's so, there's more. Uh, it's a this match than just like a regular bout. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? There's more on a pole. There's more special main events. There's more um, hardcore Texas death match. And, you know, there's just more of said match uh, stipulation than there is a single match. Yeah. Um, but this is right up there um, with the heroes of wrestling for me. Um, not, I know, I. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you which one I would watch before the other because I'm heated right, right, right now. <laughs> and I'm not making a snap judgment. That'll be which, which, or which one would you rather claw your eyes out faster? Oh my God, that tag match with the Bushwhackers and Sheik and Volkov. Oh my God, probably, probably that. <laughs> I would, I would, I would probably watch this show first before that. Before heroes of wrestling, but this is that doesn't make this good at all. It doesn't make make it bad either. It's very bad. Um, but that is my scathing review of WCW Super Brawl 2000. Um, if you guys have seen this card or any matches on this card, um, let us know your thoughts on them in the comments below. Um, if you haven't, um, Right now, it's available on WWE Network, soon to be Peacock. Um, you know, and I'll be sure to put that in the description. Um, while you're there, uh, check out our social media links, including links to our Kofi page, um, my Discord, where you can get daily and weekly show updates, and also where to find us over, over on the socials medias. Um, so the next time you see us i have planned something very special uh -oh. um, yeah so next time we meet it'll be at the end of the month episode six mlw super fight 2019 <laughs> as long as we're not on a poll i'll, I'll take it yeah there you go um so as always everyone thank you so much for watching my name is Cod Sinclair. Jeff Hitman Hall. There he is. And we will see you next time.